<laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to uh, Greyhound Night, which is an event that is hosted by 116th Greyhounds. Uh, for those of you who don't know who that is, that is a highly competitive Hello Loose clan. Um, they are taking part in the HCA, which is you know, pretty much one of the biggest competitive tournaments in the world. So absolute honor to be here. Of course, you know, I am Colonel Matthews with the 10th Mountain Division, um, otherwise known as BMAT15 by my Twitch handle. Uh, like I said, absolute honor to be here. You know, thank you for inviting me 116th. But, of course, I am not alone. I am joined by my man, my fellow co-caster, Captain King Wizard with the 10th Mountain Division. King Wizzy, how you doing, my man? Hey, hey. Hello, everybody. Uh, absolutely honored to be here with the uh, Greyhound Knight. Big shout out to 116th Greyhound. Thank you very much for the opportunity to do this. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I'm uh, I, I'm thrilled. I can't wait. Um, some really good teams making up both sides tonight. I think we're going to have a, a slobber knocker, to borrow a, a, a phrase. Um, Utah Beach as well. It's going to be a hell of a game. Can't wait to get going. Yeah, man. Utah Beach. It's a... Uh... In my opinion, one of the better maps in Hell Let Loose. Uh, you know, I think it's pretty balanced. Some of the points are, especially the midpoints, can be a little bit American leaning. But nonetheless, you know, one of the competitive favorites. You know, I absolutely love it. So, not really sure who's going to take the cake here, uh, with there being a lot of, you know, pretty high tier European clans taking part today. Uh, King Wizzy, do you recognize any of these guys? I do recognize uh, a few. I've only got the shorthand for their name, so I've had to work a few of them out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so bear with me. But um, no, both teams from from the sheets I can see um, do look stacked, um, and it's it, it's an honor to be casting such a uh, such a European fight as well. Yeah, I mean, for those of you who understand accents, you can tell my man King Wizzy is from across the pond in England. Uh, of course, I'm an American guy, you know, from Pittsburgh, PA. But uh, yeah, you know, it's awesome having these kinds of events. I know, you know, we host something over here in the States, like us, you know, NA and South American uh, clans. Even some guys from Australia, you know, some guys from Chimera and like, OC and Foy Boys will show up. But, uh, yeah, it's called the Embassy. You know, nice little thing that we all put together. Have, like, a Friday night fight similar to this. Um, of course, Greyhounds look like they do it on Thursdays. But uh, pretty big. You know, pack four servers full. Looks like the Greyhounds are packing two servers full. So, I mean, any event like this where you're getting a pretty big chunk of the Hella Loose community together, in my opinion, is always awesome. So... Uh, can't wait to see this battle. I think it's probably going to be pretty epic. So, yeah, I'm not too sure he's going to win this one. But uh, I guess <laughs> King Wizzy, let's take a shot in the dark. Uh, who do you think is going to win? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that is going to be difficult. However, um, oh, I'm going to give it to the allies. I, despite the... Despite the the teams the uh, the the very strategies that are bound to be on display. Um, I don't know. I've got a good feeling about the allies tonight on uh, on Utah Beach. I think so long as they start strong and quick. Um, obviously, you can get very bogged down in the middle of Utah Beach. Um, they're they're going to have a a good night. So that's where my money is. Um, I don't know if you want to do forfeits as well. Where's your money? <laughs> uh if i'm being honest uh utah beach it really depends on uh the midpoint for me like if it's wn7 i think the axis have a really good chance if it's chapel i think that point leads a little bit towards the allies and wn4 leans a little bit towards the allies um so it really depends on how the axes start. If they, you know, don't get a good start, you know, don't get inside the barbed wire on WN7 or WN4, I think it's going to be a very long match. 
because once you're outside of the barbed wire, it's kind of GG at that point. Um, especially if, you know, the Allied team has their stuff together. But... So, <laughs> kind of a cop out for me, but uh, <laughs> it could be anyone. But it really could be. Um, both teams strong. I, I agree, um, in principle, with what you're saying about the points. I, f I f just have a feeling if the allies, even if we're we're talking WN7, if the allies can get a spring in their step off the go, um, I reckon they can they can get in there and, and do the damage that's necessary. Basically, either team does not want uh, the other to start establishing themselves on the middle. Um, that barbed wire is a nightmare. Um, and, yeah, you want, you could get bogged down on there. Um, I think if it's chapel, it'll be more of an open fight. There's more fields around there and, and sort of less cover. Um, you could use um, WN4 as a, as, a, as a staging point for an attack down there. Um, we could be surprised, of course. Uh, one team might get into a really offensive position, and we might have a slog um, towards the beach or further off the map. But uh, yeah, this is one of those games I think that could be won in the first five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen teams start off poorly and still win on uh, on Utah Beach, but that doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> like 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 I said, I mean especially WN4 and WN7, you know, the barbed wire is such an obstacle on those, you know, objectives on the map, those midpoints that you know, once you get pushed outside of it or let's say you lose the point and lose a ton of OPs, you know, that you had trying to fight for it. I mean, the points are surrounded by open ground, especially on the German side in WN4. I mean, it's an absolute nightmare trying to get back in there. Not saying it's impossible, you know, but like you said, I mean, getting set up for, you know, once you cap the middle point and get set up, you know, get established, get your spawns and stuff up, um, that's the team that's probably going to have the most success and possibly win the match. But that being said, uh, midpoint's actually Chapel, so let me... Uh, Open fight then. Yeah, this is going to be, this going to be close, so let's... uh. Let me switch to the stream cam. See what's going on in here. So, here, one second. Let me click on something real quick. All right, cool. So, as you guys can see, uh, midpoint is chapel, and then <laughs> all the other points are at the bottom of the map. So, this is a very interesting layout, in my opinion. So I'm going to take a squad lead spot, run my ass off the map real quick. But yeah, I, <laughs> I, I think I think this is the midpoint that both teams definitely wanted for sure. Um, in my yeah, opinion, it's especially the biggest fight. It's interesting though, isn't it? That there's going to be an entire flank that's potentially forgotten about. Um, but it could also provide a fantastic main road for a flank in the later stages, uh, especially if you can sort of get round the back of either Drowned Fields or WN5. So I I still fancy the whole map to be a massive battleground, but I believe that, you know, sort of the free fall line could definitely be an interesting one, one to watch. Yeah, I agree. I, I definitely think we're going to see a lot of, like, really wide flanks. You know, because especially if we're looking at Chapel here, um, this compound that's just to the north, like partially northwest of Chapel, you know, that's absolutely huge. I'd expect both teams to at least send a squad size force over there. Um, you know, the main red road running kind of down the five and six line for the Axis is going to be huge. That intersection, you know, if you're the Axis team, you definitely want control of that. Possibly the buildings down south of that. So. Yeah, expect to see some really wide flanks as teams try to, you know, get some, get some positioning on each other, get some map control. But the transitions from Chapel to Drown Fields and WN Five is going to be an absolute nightmare, though. <laughs> like, like whoever caps yeah, it and tries to push. That is going to be a, 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 a so open runs it's 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 horrible 
and I think both commanders right now will be stressing um, the importance of making sure their team isn't the one that has to navigate that. Um, it's got to be a strong start from both. Again, Chapel, it's more leaning towards the Allies where it sits. There's more cover for the Allies. Uh, the Axis are going to have to be very clever in how they approach that. Um, having said that, though, if they come around from the sort of uh, drowned fields area, they could be building their defense as they go. Um, so, again, can't wait for this curtain to drop on them to get into that point because it really could go either way. Yeah, because you're gonna need you're gonna need to kind of build your front line. Like, if you're the axe in the situation, you know, advancing from John Fields to Chapel, you know, because I mean, yeah, like the the strong point is kind of far away if you're going that way. But you know, gaining ground gradually and advancing is gonna be very key. And it looks like for the Axis, they are gonna get a garrison pretty much right on that corner. But anyways, we see a lot of trucks scooting on in. <laughs> Looks like, you know, with the new update, guys are able to ride on top of it. So getting some AT shots. Uh, up in the north, didn't really hit anything. You can see how teams are deploying. Like, uh, the Allied team in this case, sending a very strong force to that compound. You know, Grandma's house, just north of Chapel. And it looks like uh, the Axis team is as well, although someone just caught a rocket to the forehead. So that's rough. Axis is capping, but looks like the allies are really paying attention to areas that they're gonna need later on. Man, all right, a truck just blew up. So that was an Axis truck. Yeah, it looks like a more sort of measured foreshadowing approach from the allies, but looking at the, the clusters of units, uh, it looks like the Axis have come out stronger in those gunfights. Oh yeah, I mean, like the Axis, they have they have a majority control over the four grid squares itself. You know, very spread out. Looks like everybody's kind of in their own lane, you know, trying to push towards the point. You know, this southern southern push by the Axis. Um, I know you can't see this, but Baker, Abel, and Item Squad claiming these, you know, these buildings in this little town to the south of Chapel is absolutely huge. But as I say that, though, it looks like the Allies are starting to get a foothold on the strong point itself. So a lot of BST2 guys, which we, we actually just played them this past Sunday in the HCA, and those guys, they are probably the cream of the crop of the miners, if I'm being honest. Absolutely stellar guys. Fantastic opponent. Very hard to come against, and uh, yeah, you can see they're establishing dominance over that strong point, and uh, the, the allies are well placed if they can win the gunfights that they're currently in to collapse on that point. Um, Axis are pretty much now focused on a sort of northern push, um, but I can see they, uh, they've they found the Sherman and they are absolutely plastering it with rockets by the chapel. Yeah, and it looks like the Sherman is being saved by, you know, some random fences and hedgerows kind of stopping it from the enemy Panzer IV and rockets. Um, also taking a shot from behind, yeah, the Puma made his way behind him. Uh, to the southeast, we could zoom in and see it over there. And as of course I look away, it looks like the Panzer IV got the kill on the Sherman. So huge fuel trade right there, but probably going to see the Allies start pulling up some 76s. It was a great move by that Puma as well to get behind. Now it can really start doing some damage against these forces that are at the chapel. Oh yeah, like he can. He's going to start taking down garrisons. He's going to start taking down OPs. We've Although, just been hit. Yeah, it looks like Oddball hit him with a with a bazooka. He has another one, hits it and takes it down. Damn, that that's huge. Because if that Puma was able to run wild, I mean, it could have been absolutely devastating for the Allied team in this case. But once again, I mean, this midpoint fight, <laughs> you know, the match is already uh, just over seven minutes old, and this midpoint is not decided. However, it is leaning towards the Allies in this case. Um, but those of you who don't know, uh, the Axis, the German guys are in blue, the Allies are in red on my screen. So... Don't you go confusing me now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm King Wiz is on the other team, so it's completely opposite for him, but... Uh, definitely an interesting uh, setup for 
how this is being played. You know, of course, me being an American. But as I say that, you know, now the axes are starting to decap. Um, starting to lose some red pressure on the midpoint. So, because BST2, these BST2 guys, they are still in the church. We have uh, Rosencran and Cara Barba, you know, holding out. Of course, Ham and Eggs and Stenner are in the back of the church, but they are quickly getting surrounded by some blueberries on the Axis team. Of course, as I say that, Stenner and Ham and Eggs go down. Yeah, it looks like the Axis push now is has worked to clear out the back trenches, so it's all about how they can hold the church. Oh, never Ooh, mind. the satchel. A favorite to clear out buildings. That was that was good control there, and now the Allies have got a problem. They've got to get in and retake. Oh, yeah, like... Uh, I'm not too sure this guy's name's El Camaro and Classic X from First Fall Schmiegers. Ooh. Oh! Man, BST2 getting a spawn in on the OP, but looks like that OP just got nuked by a bazooka. That is rough. Um, so it looks like the Axis are going to be getting a firm stronghold on the strong point. That was a big play. Yeah, and kind of looking around, looks like the Axis, you know, they do have... A pretty big advantage of the northern area, you know, holding down Grandma's house. Um, are a couple of allied guys, you know, a couple cherries lying around. And even a couple guys, you know, around uh, WN4. The couple warehouses up above. Although one dude from First Falschmjager just got lit up. Same with another guy. Damn, they're always going down. And the Axis have very strong control south of the point. So, we're seeing the Axis team really dominate the entirety of the four grid squares that Chapel is in. And of course the important area just outside of it to the north. Uh, we have a friendly recon plane going in. Seeing a lot of guys pushing in from the little shed between Hill 5 and the Chapel. So, look for the allies to really make a big push here. But I don't think it's going to do it. It looks like the blue team is going to capture. So let's hit it with that. Of course, I got 38th Infantry Division as <laughs> the boom since they are commanding today. But yeah, just like that, after over 10 minutes of intense combat, the Axis team have taken the midpoint of Chapel. And just looking at it from this side, it's it's clear to see the, the Axis have a, a shape, as you alluded to before. They've, they've developed this front line, and they are now in sweeping diagonal across the map. The Allies are really going to get hammered from every side um, as that bombing run comes through to try and cut through the reinforcements the Allies have run up. And equally, they get one for their own. Um, I think the uh, Axis bombing run potentially a bit more devastating there. It's now going to be about repositioning. Um, are, the, are the guys that are up there in the north for the Axis going to come down or are they going to hold their position um, and see how more control versus a faster capture? Yeah, I mean... That seems to be the case here. Looks like the Allies are moving up some armor to try to support the push but I mean this is kind of weak for a push you know they only have four real infantry although they did have a little spawn wave from the garrison behind the shed but you do see the axis you know forming their front line now they're going to start gaining ground now they're going to start you know trying to wipe out allied spawns that might be in the area so I mean, this is like the battle shape that you kind of want to force whenever you're uh, playing competitive Hell Let Loose. Because yeah, you kind of just want to overwhelm the enemy and, you know, try not to have any holes and like areas where guys can slip through. I've just noticed as well that there are, there are guys now in Axis that have reached the beach. So that will be putting extra pressure on the Allies now that they'll know that the Axis are coming for them potentially where they're spawning. Um, we do have one squad that seems to be moving very quickly into defense, but um, yeah, the, the shape of both teams, the Axis are looking a lot healthier at the moment. And uh, there is a pocket of, of allied resistance to the south that's in danger of getting flanked. 
Yeah, it looks like uh, Andre from Red is the one Axis squad leader that's made his way kind of behind the lines. But yeah, the Axis, um, looks like their southern flank's getting kind of rolled, though. Uh, looking at the garrison situation, I mean, they did have one in F6 that just got taken out. Um, not very strong garrison situation, if you ask me. Although, as soon as I say that, house squad gets one up by grandma's house. But still, the allies... The beach, they have actually got the Panzer II down there in support now. So oh, this damn. could be uh, quite a move. Yeah, I mean, WN5 was contested there for a second. Um, it is actually starting to get capped. So if you're the allies, I mean, they do have a nice southern push going, you know, to try to get up to chapel, it looks like. A lot of uh, 501st DS guys, you know, another Spanish clan. But looks like the Axis are going to form a little bit of pressure here and possibly force a big retreat. You know, we got ham and eggs and Stenner, you know, chilling back to try to defend. Of course, it is contested. As contested, Chapel's now being captured. So, we might have a good old-fashioned cap race, although now, now WN5 is not being captured, and now Chapel is not being captured either. That Panzer too, though, that could be very devastating. I mean, if the Axis can get some more guys down here, it might be four to one quick. There is a situation with a panther near the uh, the chapel, but it's um, it's taking a lot of fire from the allies. I want to try and keep that alive to keep some of that pressure up, given that the infantry numbers are dwindling over here. Yeah, I mean, look at the map. There's only one Axis squad anywhere near the strong point of chapel itself. So I'm going to zoom on over there. Looks like this... Pretty much this Panzer II over here, this Lux, is going to try to hold down WN5. But yeah, this this southern push by the Allies, this is looking strong. You got you know, guys from 501st pushing in. You guys from 129th. The commander's name is Jesus Christ. That is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes you need divine intervention. Yeah, and it looks like Jesus himself is going to try to lead this team back to victory. Uh, we do see a big spawn wave to the southeast of the church from 1st Fallschirmjäger and BST-2. So the allies are looking like pretty strong for this counter push. And we have a 501st squad lead making his way around chapel. So could possibly get a 10 man or, you know, a filling up of a outpost to push on to chapel. And the southwestern garrison right on the corner of the two points is... Well, it's about to get strafed. Maybe that'll clear it out. And it did, but it's still warm. Yeah, you're going to have... Ivan Arrow. Looks like he's going to push in here from 501st and take that garrison out. So, yeah, this is looking... Potentially pretty rough for the Axis here. The boys in blue. I think it's going to depend how fast these Americans can get in the trenches. Though there's a lot of open fields, this is the disadvantage of Chapel. A lot of open ground um, to be flanked from, to be shot from range. Um, and there's also, it appears, the next uh, tank coming up from the German side, which uh, appears to be another Panther. So they're going to have to deal with that as well. Um, they've got the momentum though from the push. They, they seem to work that magic out of nothing potentially because of the split with the Axis forces trying to get the back lines. If they can keep the momentum going and get in there before German armor rolls in, um, they, they could put themselves in a really strong position. Yeah, I mean, this... Uh, <laughs> and of course, looking at my stream, I just realized I had the wrong name up, but... Uh, <laughs> it still says the embassy on there. That's hilarious. Free but uh, that's well. Yeah, I mean... This allied push is going to gain some momentum. You know, we see guys like pushing their way through trenches and stuff. Of course, you know, the point was contested and now is being defended. But, I mean, if they can keep up this pressure, you know, they're really going to kind of pin down the Axis forces here. Possibly retake this point. They even have some guys pushing in from the west, you know, down the big creek. 
So, I mean, if they can manage to reinforce this, you know, defend outposts and continue to push into the point, you know, that's going to be huge. That being said, though, we got some RHA guys starting to push their way in from the south. Uh, of course, my man Beardman, um, I'm pretty sure RHA is Hungarian, if I'm not mistaken. So... Just about to mention that's very smart from RHA there. Um, looking at the structure of the two teams, uh, you have to say, given the now sort of more northern focus of the Axis, if uh, the Allies were to quickly capture uh, Chapel, um, they were open to potentially being rushed on for the next point. RA, um, excuse me, RHA there, putting themselves in a strong position in case they're needed to defend. Oh boy, uh, looks like first Falschermjäger have built an AT gun and have taken down the enemy Panther. Uh, that is absolutely huge, and what a quick <laughs> quick reaction putting an AT gun up to, uh, you know, deal with the enemy heavy armor right there. Huge play by, I believe that's Hewler and Ella. Probably absolutely butchering that, my German is not fantastic. But yeah, that eliminating enemy heavy armor, they do have enough fuel to spawn another one. Um, but still, I mean, losing heavy tanks relatively quickly is something you don't want to get used to. <laughs> so absolutely huge play for the allies here. And once again... got to keep the economic game in mind when playing Hell Let Loose. And yeah, big point tickets like heavy tanks are, are something that need to be protected. Good play. Speaking of which, the uh, the the second uh, Panther tank is is being challenged now by uh, the Allies by Chapel. That one looking in a bit of a better position. I don't see any AT guns up yet to chase chase that one away. Five O first, uh, trying in vain there to take them out of the the match. Oh yeah, and. You know, the Panther playing it pretty smart. You know, he's trying to stay away from enemy infantry, you know, sticking close to blueberries. You know, always a good strategy. My only concern here is he is kind of exposed from the east. So, like, if the Allies were to get up, like, a... I mean, although, in this case, the Germans have total superiority over Hill 5. So, it's probably factoring in a little bit in his decision-making. But, like, if the Allies were to get, like, an AT gun up somewhere on Hill 5, I mean, this Panther would be totally exposed. But it seems like everyone's pretty well aware of where the Allies are. You know, constantly pushing in from the south, pushing in from the west, you know, up around, you know, the little creek, making their way to Grandma's house. You know, so the Axis team playing it pretty smart, being aware of the situation. Yeah, they've kept their, um, their sweeping front lines very tight where they need to be. It doesn't seem like they're wasting any energy on positions of the map that they simply don't need. The Allies have called in more armor. That is to the far north. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if that's going to be used as a flanking weapon. Yeah, I mean, bring that thing into the north of church. You know, probably get it. Try to set it up somewhere like H4, G4 area and start shelling chapel. And it looks like the Allies really beating their head off the wall here, trying to get cap progress on Chapel, but... You know, as soon as that happens... The Axes are starting to get cap progress on WN5. So, really doing a great job of setting up a good push down here. You know, two flanking garrisons to the north, one of them is locked out, so... You know, are not gonna get any fresh bodies off that, but... Weirdly enough, the one that's closer to the point is wide open. So, this could be huge for the Axis here. Axis seem to be getting very established uh, down here. Um, I've noticed they've dropped supplies, um, so that'll be to aid the garrisons. WN5 is in, in big danger now. And uh, I can see that the Allies are running to defend. Um, but again, as, as you alluded to there, if you, if you put more people in defense, then you lose your attacking strength. 
and this is going to play into the Axis's hands um, as they sweep. I'm just looking at this point now, and it's a sea of red, um, would be blue for the viewers, um, just enveloping the surrounding areas. It's a very strong strategy. They're moving very well together. Yeah, and we're seeing the allies, you know, start pushing guys into the strong point, you know, starting to get that extra cap weight, you know, guys that maybe don't play hella loose a lot or just started playing, you know, when you're inside the strong point, you count as three. When you're in the four grid squares around it, you know, you count as one. But even that little extra cap weight really is not helping the allies right now. Um, starting to filter some guys in there. It's, of course, as soon as I say it, they start defending. But yeah, this point is completely surrounded. <laughs> like, yeah, look there's at a big push going up the beach now as well from the Axis. It's it's fantastic to see. There's the supply truck coming back in. I know the, uh, the commander has been very busy down there um, preparing his forces. And yeah, they're, they're just completely surrounding this point now and they'll be able to choke it off if, uh, if they can't get the pressure back on Chapel. Yeah, and like, because you see here, like, RHA, they're pushing in from the southwest. You got Red and WD-44 and 38th Infantry Division <laughs> pushing in from the northwest. And then even more WD-44 to the east, completely cutting off any kind of reinforcement, making their way back into the point. I mean, this is looking rough <laughs> if you are the allies right now. RHA has now breached the wire as well, so it's... Uh... <laughs> It's like watching a swarm. <laughs> They'll just be feeling a little bit surrounded, a little bit overwhelmed here. Yeah, and is this... This is looking like a panic uh, bombing run from the Allies coming in. Jesus Christ, probably calling it in on himself. And that bombing run's not gonna... It might get booky. Yeah, it gets booky. It's a shame. I think that needed to be just a touch more danger closed. Ooh, but looks like the uh, Axis got a little too cocky. The uh, <laughs> the Allies had a little spawn wave and prevented capture there for a second, but not to be. Looks like uh, all of that is in vain. An airhead has just landed on the point as well, which I'm assuming, given my map, is for the Axis. And this now, look at the pressure that they can put on the final point. This might be it. Yeah, I mean, they're already capturing, so that HQ <laughs> HQ spawn's going to be locked out. Looks like the Axis commander is going to be throwing in a bombing run just to finish off the job. I mean, this is looking like GG. I mean, <laughs> a, a tidal wave of blueberries pushing their way into Uncle Red. Um, totally not expecting a beatdown this quickly. I mean, this is, you know, only... 26 minutes this match has been going on uh who knows maybe they'll get together and play another one play a second one but i mean this is rough <laughs> it's not done now. but it's been from the axis perspective it's been a very structured game um, they've always existed only in the pockets of the map that they needed to be very well coordinated and the um slow build-up um, which allowed them to just go on this all-out offensive and now the Americans really don't have any chance. You'd need a, a fleet of bombers I think to clear that point now. <laughs> yeah I think I think the game would need a carpet bombing call-in in order to fix this match right now. And if you're watching teams on the team, that's, that's a free idea. Oh and the precision strike to finish it off. Looks like they were gonna take down <laughs> you know, some kind of vehicle or repair station in middle HQ, but that that wraps it up. Um, Shame as well because the cap race was was getting close, but uh, now all hope is lost. Yeah, this is going to be a win for the Axis. So I guess I owe you a drink. Yeah, I guess so. I uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean this this was an absolute domination. Uh, wow. GG for the Axis boys. GG for the Allied guys. I mean, that was tough. <laughs> um, of course, you know, mad props. Uh, Deshuna, the commander for the Axis team. He, of course, is a member of 38th Infantry Division. Jesus Christ himself uh, <laughs> commanding for the Allies. 
No, not even Jesus could bring this one back. That is hilarious. Might need a phone call to Dad. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna have to hit up Pops and be like, "Hey, man, you know, I need, <laughs> I need a little bit of help bringing this one back." But uh, absolutely huge, huge performance by the Axis in this case. Um, of course, for those of you guys who don't know, this is Greyhounds Night, uh, put together by One Sixteenth Panzer Division. Um, these guys, this of course is a conglomeration. You know, we see RHA, they're Hungarians. Don't know too much about WD Forty Four. Uh, of course, Greyhound guys themselves. Looks like got some tankers, you know, Sangir, Beaker, and Basu, you know, putting up decent tanker scores. Uh, you know, got some Misfits guys in here. And then, of course, on the Allied team, you know, BST2, DD, 501st DS. Um, some really heavy hitting European clans in here. First Falschmjägers as well. So. Yeah, false, first Falschmjäger had a very strong uh, attacking round there. That was. Um, I think it's been a it's been a treat um, for all of us watching as well, just to see this high level play of of Hell Let Loose, and it really shows when a team is clicking and communicating and, and moving as one, just how devastating a weapon that can be. Yeah, I mean, that was <laughs> just just the wall of you know German infantry moving from point to point. Um, you know, getting the good flanking garrison at Hill 5, you know, got one even closer to that, uh, closer to the beach, you know, absolutely huge. I mean, literally just a wall of Axis infantry pushing their way into the point. Um, looks like guys are starting to clear out a little bit, so it looks like this one might be over. But, uh, I mean, awesome. That <laughs> That was a hell of a match to watch. Uh, King was he any MVPs, any, you know, guys sticking out, you know, kind of going above so, and beyond. <laughs> there were so many, um, fantastic performances there. I already mentioned first Fall Shumiega had a great attacking round. I think RHA, um, they did a really good job on their positioning, um, preempting, um, the allies sort of trying to take back positions. Um, and it, Congratulations as well to both the commanders. I think um, Jesus Christ <laughs> did a fantastic job with what he had, but just the 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 absolute discipline. I'll I'll put it down to of, of the German team to keep their structure as rigid as it was. Just there was no coming back from that. Yeah, I mean. You know, RHA, like, spawning in and really taking care of that southern flank, you know, right at the start. I think that was pretty huge. Um, like I said, first fall Schmieger, you know, they were trying. You know, they were getting, like, a good flank. Um, them and BST2 were really working together to try to take the mid-cap at first. Uh, they seemed to be, like, the two, like, squad elements that were, you know, trying to fight the hardest for the midpoint at first. Um, did have a pretty decent foothold. Eventually got nuked by a bazooka and, you know, put an end to that. But really stellar efforts from pretty much everybody involved. Um, even for the Allied guys, the guys that lost. Um, you know, like we said, BST2 and First Fall Shoemakers, you know, really putting in some work. And even some 501st DS first guys. As well. yeah. yeah, the 501st, there was some fantastic um, anti tank play from them. Um, really smart positioning as well. Yeah, I mean... Just a great round. <laughs> Just a, a hell of a battle. A lot to digest in such a small amount of time. I think uh, if it had been a live event, I'd have been screaming fight forever at them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a shame it ended so quickly. Um, I'm going to try to get uh, a hold of Black Shooter and see what's going on. Of course, he's the guy that uh, set all this up or you know got a hold of me in order to stream this. Uh, like I said, it looks like the server is still 41 to 29. Looks like some guys are clearing out. Um, if that's the case, then, you know, I guess we might as well clear out here in a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, let me get a hold of Black Shooter real quick and see what is going on.